Hey everybody, we all know that the eyes are the windows to the soul and that the eyes have it. So in today's video, we're gonna paint some eyes. We're gonna do a human eye, a dog eye, and a cat's eye. And you're gonna find out that eyes, regardless of the species, are all pretty much the same thing. So let's go ahead and have some fun with this. And if you are my subscribers, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see this type of video in real time, full length version of this video, please check out my Patreon channel and you'll get to, you'll, you'll get to see a whole lot of really cool stuff. So again, thanks for joining me. And without further ado, let's jump in to some eyes. Well, here you see, we've got some eyes, some awesome looking eyes. We have a human eye, cat eye, and a dog eye. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. We have an array of eyes that we're going to paint. Of course, we have a human eye, which is actually yours truly. We have a dog's eye and we have a cat's eye. Now, I just did a very, very rough sketch um, of the structure of the eye. And basically an eye, one thing you have to keep in mind is that all eye balls are round. So you do have a ball in a socket. So there, it, there should be that look of there's like where the structure of the skull has the round socket for the eye. The eyeball sits in the eye. So always keep in mind that, that there is a fullness and a roundness to the eye, okay? Sorry, we've got the birds tweeting over here. The same applies whether it's a cat's eye, a dog's eye, a human eye, a horse eye. There is that roundness. So you always wanna keep that in the back of your head when you're doing a, a piece like this. This is just basically a structural demo on eyes, okay? I have some, <laughs> I don't mean to say, I have this kind of broken up into colors. Uh, I don't wanna call it human colors, dog colors, and cat colors. Uh, but I do have just some flesh tones here. I've got a flesh tone. Um, this is a Gamblin flesh tone. I have a uh, Gamblin uh, pink. This is a uh, radiant pink. I have a vermilion and I have a yellow ochre. Here I've got a, um, a burnt, I guess this is burnt sienna. I have raw umber and I have the Snalye, um oh goodness, Caput Mortem. Here I've got a different array of greens. I've got and this, this is permanent green, this is green, uh, mm, this is cadmium green, I have a thalo green, and these are two deep, these are two turquoises. Okay, I have ivory black, titanium white, and king's blue. And I'll probably be stealing from any one of these, this part of the palette to mix in, but I just wanted to go ahead and tell you what colors I was gonna be using for this little demo here. And I'll start with the human eye, and I'll go ahead and zoom in on that before I get started. So here we go. Okay, I'm just laying down some tones, and you'll see that um, as I get into the creases of the eyes, I'm going to use a cooler, um, darker valued tone. I am going in right now with just that little bit of creating the creases and that's how you're gonna create the dimension. And the whole time while I'm painting this, I'm always being conscious of the actual shape that the eyeball and socket creates. So you can see I'm creating the area of the, above the brow where it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit puffier there. And uh, so yeah, I'm just getting in the basic structure and putting in the color of the iris and um, we'll be putting in the sclera as well. Now keep in mind too, that because you have the upper lid, the upper lid always creates a little bit more of a shadow uh, directly below that lid. So um, obviously you're probably kind of freaked out by the fact that I did the sclera kind of this weird gray color and it will get lighter, but it will always be darker at the very top of the eye. As I mentioned before, at the top of the eye, it's always a lot darker, so I'm putting in these dark values. And because this is a round 
ball. The closest part to you is the very front of the eye. So there's why I'm lightening up the sclera and directly closest to the pupil and most forefront of the eyeball. And that helps create the roundness. And you can see I'm putting a cool shadow under the bottom lid. Uh, this is my eye, by the way, that I used as a model. And I will have to say, you know, I did, of course, have makeup on when I took the photo reference. And that's probably not the most ideal situation. So, you know, I didn't, I guess I could have put, pulled something off the internet, but I am putting in the way I see it in the picture. And of course there is mascara and there's a little bit of eyeshadow, but overall you're getting the kind of, the idea of how you have the shape of the eyeball, how you have to keep your light, you know, be very specific about where you put your light values. Here you see I'm basically going all over it with a lot more of a lighter value and I'm, I will use one brush to do the application of the light values and then I'll use an entirely different brush, usually a clean sable to go ahead and do the blending. And that's what you see here. So obviously there's no hair on this eye yet. I don't have an eyebrow or eyelashes, but you're still getting a, you're, you're getting a sense of the fullness or the roundness of the socket of the eye and how the, the flesh kind of fills in around it and uh, you know the, the lighter values go on the, the highest points. Okay, so here you see my my eye and my painting of my eye. Um, I didn't put all, that much detail into it. I just wanted to be able to show you how to make the basic structure to get the structure of the eyeball. Um, you know, I guess I was probably you know, being a little bit... Um, <laughs> here I am trying to get down. <laughs> okay, she does have a lot of... Uh, shadow under our eye here, you know, but again, you can see the basic structure of an eye socket. You can see the basic structure here of an eye socket. You can see that there's a roundness, there's a hole here, <laughs> and there's an eyeball stuck in the center of it. And that's what we did here too. You can see that you've got the lighter um, part of the sclera here. And of course I included the lighter part of the sclera here. And you know, I was not using the best brushes for eyelashes and I'm not working on the be best substrate for eyelashes and the fact that I have makeup on doesn't help. But um, as far as the perfect eye to use for a reference, ideally I, you know, have just picked something off the internet and just used somebody else's eye. But I just used the one I had. And, um, but anyway, that gives you a kind of an eye, the eye idea in a nutshell. Now we're gonna move on to the dog's eye here in just a second. a very rough, 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 rough idea of how to create an eye. But I hope you get the idea. And of course, here's our palette's already getting pretty messy, but we're getting ready to jump in to the dog's eye. Okay, here we have a dog's eye. Now, I, this is a brown dog. I'm gonna use a little bit of burnt sienna just, to, just like I did with the human eye and just to kind of block in the area around the eye. Um, to keep this super, super simple again. They might actually blend with human colors up above. All right. So you'll see sometimes when I'm working, even if it's just the blocking in stage, I will go in the direction 
that the hair grows, even if it's not even um, something you can see right away. And I don't wanna get too low because we'll get into the cat's eye here in a minute. But um, so I'll just kind of block that in a little bit, just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a smaller brush. I'm using a, uh, again, going back to my little round. And I am taking a little bit of um, the ivory black and I am going to kind of scope out the structure here. Now, just like a human eye, a dog's eye is also set into a socket, okay? So there's not that much difference, really, guys. It's um, obviously the structure is a little bit different, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of suggest where the, the pupil is going to go inside of here. And it's, this is taken a little bit at a different angle than what m the human eye that I did earlier was. I'm putting down the blue-black skin, and that's what I'm trying to show you here, uh, that the dog itself has a blue-black skin, and the fur, of course, goes over it. And uh, I also want to include the fact that these references that I'm using, you'll see um, in the beginning and end of this video. You can So if you need to use them for your own purposes and want to try to follow along at some point or uh, just work on this at home, yourself it gives you you'll have the same references that I'm using and also I want to remind you folks that if you like to see this particular video in the full length uh, real time with a whole lot more narration explaining the colors that I'm using the brushes that I'm using etc please check out my patreon channel and uh, become a patron and then this will be available to you as well but uh, yeah, so you can see that the eyeball itself is not that different than the human eye, and it is recessed, so we have a lot more dark. Now the area I'm working on here is called the haw. It's kind of like the same as that little area, uh, the corner of our eye. You can see the sclera, it's not as uh, prevalent in a dog's eye as it is in a human's eye, but it's there. I'm putting a little bit of shine there, and of course that always livens up any eyeball. It's a little bit of the reflective light, but uh, yeah, it's moving along. Now, I always like to put a little bit of cadmium red in a dog's eye. Um, that just really makes it bright. Okay, here is the photo reference that I used. You can see you have the lighter area of the lower lid and you have the upper 
area, the lower, uh, upper lid, the highlighted areas. And you can see you have this very dark recessed area here. And that was what I was trying to convey here. So when you're, when you're looking at this eye, you can see, I'm gonna bring it even closer here. You can see we've got the upper, upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, and you have the haw here and the dark recessed area of the eye. So, and you know, again, when you put your shine in, I, you know, I could actually lighten up the shine a little bit more just to put a little bit more sparkle in there. But yeah, of course that's the fun part, right? But there is basically a dog's eye. Now for our cat's eye, we're gonna get fun because uh, I get to use greens and greens are really fun for me. Now the lids are not as prominent in a cat's eye per se, but they are there. You can see we've got the, this is just the, the lower lid. Um, you can see very light, you know, where they have their skin. And some cats, this skin is a lot more prominent. Um, and you have your upper lid. Of course, remember the upper lid is always gonna create a little bit more shadow at the top of the eye. So it's almost always lighter at the bottom of the actual iris than it is at the top of the iris. This has got a lot of fun greens. Um, here you do have the sclera. And the, there is a haw in here or a, you know, just that corner of the eye, but it's just not as prominent, but we'll have fun with this. This is, this is the cat eye that we're gonna be working with. And again, I will include the references here at the end of the video so you can play with this at home. Of course, I jumped right in to the green of the iris because that's the funnest part for me. But I am actually just getting in the overall shape. And underneath fur is generally a little bit darker. So even though this is a orange tabby cat, I am kind of suggesting the darker values underneath the fur that are going to go over on top of the fur that I'm currently painting in. And of course, the top of the iris is always a little bit darker than the bottom of the iris due to the eyelid above it. Something interesting too, you know, we all know that cat's pupils are kind of that little slit shape instead of round like a dog or a human's uh, pupil is. But not all cats have that slit type of pupil. Um, your big cats like lions and tigers all have round pupils. Interesting, right? And another, on a side note, um, also the um, fox has a slit eyelid, or I mean, I'm sorry, a slit pupil just like the cat does. So there you go.
Okay, here we see all three of our eyes that we did today. And we have our human eye, we have our dog eye, we have our cat eye. All distinctly different, yet basically all the same. You know, we have a round, uh, a round marble, if you will, stuck in a large hole called the eye socket. All of that is the same. Uh, you can see what a mess I've got here of a, of a palette. But I actually robbed colors from either side, whether it was a dog colors, human colors, or cat colors. I kind of, you know, big barn stole from either end. But you have an idea now that, you know, you're going to, whether it's a cat, a dog, or a human, the top lid almost always shadows the um, iris in that it's always darker, usually at the top of the eyeball. And uh, yeah, there you have it. I, I hope if you have any questions that you will not hesitate to contact me, go ahead and leave it in the comments section and I'll get to you. Let's see if I can give you a better close up version of, of all of the pieces here. Let me see if I can just bring this by. So there you go, you have the human eye, the dog eye, and the cat eye. Wow, that was fun. Okay, so here you see, we've got all different kinds of eyes. And regardless of what species you have, we got a bunch of eyeballs here, different colors, but basically everything's pretty much the same, right? I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please give me some thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And if you like this sort of thing and you want to see more in-depth videos, whether it's tutorials, sneak peeks into what's going on behind the scenes in my studio, please check out my Patreon channel. And uh, again, thanks for joining me. And until we paint again, I'll see you. Bye.